Hey everyone, and welcome to the first video in my Global Political Economy course. Over the semester, we're going to be engaging with a variety of theoretical approaches to political economy, looking at the evolution and the future of the current global economic system, and considering some of the key contemporary issues and debates in the global economy. I recognize that for many of you, this may be your first exposure to the subfield of political economy. And so before we dive into the deeper concepts and theoretical models, this week we'll outline some of the foundational concepts and tools that will be useful in your understanding and analysis of political economy. The best place to begin is understanding what exactly constitutes global political economy. What, in other words, will we be studying this semester? The scale of the global economy is almost unbelievable. Each year, multinational corporations invest around $2 trillion in foreign countries. We usually call this foreign direct investment, or FDI. Every month, countries export about $1.6 billion worth of goods. And every single day, more than $5 trillion turns over in foreign exchange markets. And if we look to see how this has changed over time, we see some pretty dramatic results. In 1990, the total value of global foreign direct investment, that is the total value of private investment in companies based in one country into operations in another country, was valued at about $239 billion. This figure steadily increased throughout the post-Cold War era, peaking at around $3.3 trillion just before the 2008 global financial crisis. Similarly, total global exports, which is a good proxy for the total value of international trade, measured about $5.2 trillion in 1990, growing steadily since then, despite several downturns due to recessions, global financial crises, and other events. Total global exports peaked in 2018 with a value of more than $30 trillion before falling as a result of the global COVID pandemic. By and large, we tend not to notice the operations of the global economy in our contemporary lives, except when those operations begin to break down. And in the post-COVID global economy, they broke down in some pretty dramatic ways. During the COVID lockdowns, we all became familiar with the shortages of basic necessities like toilet paper or meat as supply chains were disrupted and global manufacturers struggled to meet shifting demands and labor shortages. And after the lockdowns ended, we faced other challenges in the global economy, including sharp increases in inflation, which we see reflected in higher prices for nearly everything we buy, as well as continued disruptions to the global supply chains, shipping and transportation disruptions, and a host of other challenges. But what exactly does all of this have to do with political economy? As a formal field of study, political economy emerges concomitantly with the transition from feudalism to capitalism and the Industrial Revolution. Thinkers like Adam Smith, David Ricardo and Karl Marx, and later Susan Strange and others, laid the foundation for the field. Though its roots lie much deeper in the works of Arab scholar Ibn Khaldun, whose works focused on the distinction between profit and sustenance, a distinction that would be later central to the work of other political economists. Indeed, Khaldun's observation that civilization and its well-being, as well as business property, depend on the productivity and people's effort in all directions in their own interests and profit, can be seen as a direct precursor to the work of early political economists like Adam Smith and David Ricardo. But perhaps the easiest way to think about the field of political economy is as operating at the intersection of political science and economics, while simultaneously drawing on a variety of other fields, including sociology, geography, history, psychology, cultural studies, and ecology, among others. And in this sense, political economy addresses a variety of questions. In its earliest phase, Political economy was interested in understanding the conditions under which production and consumption were organized in nation-states. That is, to analyze the processes governing the production of wealth at the level of the state. In this way, political economy focused on the differences in forms of national economic organization, feudalism versus capitalism, capitalism versus socialism and communism, laissez-faire versus interventionism, and so on. 
More recently, political economy has centered on questions like the role of power in questions of resource allocation by state or private actors, the intersection of international relations and economics, including policy areas like trade and warfare, and economic models of political processes, including public choice theory and game theory, voting behavior, and the like. In order to make sense of these topics, and the others we'll consider throughout the course, we'll need some basic foundational concepts and tools. And so, when you're ready, make your way through the material for this week where we're going to examine some of them. But that's it for now. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section below, and thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.